AEO retail name. Soon, soon. <clears throat> What's going on, everybody? Go ahead and give me a mic check. Let me know if you can see the screen. $20 calls, American Eagle Outfitters. Obviously, right now, guys, the market is pretty juicy right now on the long side. <clears throat> a lot of trades going here. Probably not the ideal time to do a webinar. However, we are here. Thank you guys for joining me. I don't want to be here at all. But we shall rock with it. A dish seeing a little June sweet bread activity. We'll get started in a couple of seconds. That other voice uh, you hear is uh, Jesus right now calling out activity. Uh, guys, again, market is hot right now. Spy just went green. I mean, it's a perfect time actually for us to have the discussion of Spy anyway. Luis here saying she doesn't have audio. Everybody has audio. If you guys ever have an audio issues, that's on you, not me. So stop being a herb with your own fucking computers and shit. All right, let's hit it. Uh, what's going on, everybody? Um, let's uh, shut Jesus off right here. All right. Uh, so today here we're talking about spy. It's actually a pretty, <laughs> it's a pretty good uh, time here to talk about spy. Uh, topic of the webinar here: It all starts with the spy. There's no trade that you really want to be making aggressively uh, if it's not timed with the spy. Uh, and we can take a look at a real-time example right now. You can see uh, this is the intraday chart of the SPY. Uh, we were choppy for most of the day. And what happens in chop, chop trading uh, is that you, you might get ranges, but there's no solid direction. So if you look at most stocks, uh, obviously we had the drop uh, off the open here on Amazon. But if you look at most stocks, this is how they're looking um, for most of the action in – uh, 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 you know, this chop sort of period. If you take a look at any stock, uh, any large cap stock, they're all going to trade here with the indexes, especially uh, when we have such high profile kind of moves uh, that we've been having recently in such wide ranges here on the ES. Uh, you can see the SPY right now still bucking the highs. That's almost, uh, you know, what is that, 25 handle move here from the lows. And all of that was like buy programs. All of that is shorts getting squeezed. Uh, and it's like, okay, let's go ahead and take profits. Let's go ahead and book back. Everybody is trying to get re-long uh, names that they wanted to buy. If you take a look at the Bank of America, I mean, look at how much they sold these things off. So that's kind of like a big force here uh, from short squeezing, uh, from uh, uh, algos and buy programs here on the ES and the SPY. We'll talk about the buy programs too. Uh, in a little bit. Uh, and then you get people that wanting to buy the dips in names that they just want to own. Uh, and you have this huge kind of effect here on the indexes and on everything uh, that you're taking a look at. If you take a look at Netflix here, this thing was trading uh, like shit for most of the morning here, uh, just like the indexes were doing. And then all of a sudden, when the index makes these moves here, you can see that most large cap names trade almost, uh, you know, tick for tick with the SPY. Uh, and that's why we're saying here that everything starts with the SPY. If you know you have a choppy environment and you're trying to go for directional trades, well, guess what? Things are going to get pretty ugly there for you uh, because you're not going to be able to, uh, you know, uh, buy a, a, a call or buy a put and be able to sell it for 50 percent higher or 100 percent higher without a substantial move in the market to support the direction that you're trying to trade. Now, couple that with the fact that you're on a Friday here and you guys, some of you guys are trading weeklies out here. You have to take into account what's called data. All right. You have to take into account the perception of some of these options uh, and the pricing of some of these options. There's a lot of people that come my way that just have no clue why an option is priced the way it is um, and why it moves the way it does. 
And this is one of the huge things that we teach in our master course, which is coming up uh, uh, here in a couple of weeks. I'll drop some information about that as well, uh, is why are options priced the way they are? What, re what really makes these options move? Why are sometimes option prices much more uh, uh, expensive than other times? Uh, if you take a look at a chain of spy uh, calls, uh, you'll notice like some of these things were so freaking expensive just coming into the day and these were just weekly options, you know, so this 267 option right here. Let's take a look at a chart of this one uh, and you can see that it was worth even a even a, almost a dollar here uh, when it was way out of the money and this thing is almost expiring here. OK, so this thing was a dollar when, uh, you know, the spy was trading around 266 and change. And this is a Friday. This is a this is a Friday. I mean, even looking at it now, it's priced at about a dollar forty. It's maybe seventy cents in the money. So that means there's an added seventy cents in premium on top of this thing. And it's a Friday where this shit closes in an in, in literally four hours. This option closes in in four hours, and there's sixty cents or seventy cents of added juice on top of this thing above the intrinsic value. Why is that? Okay. There's a lot of people that don't understand why options move the way they move, uh, and that's what I'm here to teach you, okay? But again, back to the basics here. We got to start with SPY. Your best trades are going to come, okay, from timing your uh, move along with the SPY, okay? So, for example, let's say you were trying to get long some names today, which I know a lot of people were. Uh, I was trying to buy this uh, uh, Netflix here at around like 286 uh, and if you take a look, once the spy went ahead, went ahead and supported that thesis of yours, uh, that's when the trade actually worked. Every other time you might have tried it, the spy was not supportive. Okay, you guys see that, right? The spy was not supportive of a real big move higher in Netflix. Therefore, you're not going to get the stretch in premium. Let me go ahead and prove it to you. Let's go ahead and assume here you guys were buying. Uh, I don't know. We'll call it the two. We'll call it the 290 call here. Okay. So let's say you guys were trying to get a move on Netflix um, and trying to time it properly. You can see here there's no leg here. There's no leg here all day, all morning here until the spy actually had some follow through. And you could really depend on the next tick on the spy to be higher than it was before. OK, and that's why you're getting a nice double, a nice triple uh, here on the option when you're trying to play even a name like a Netflix or a name like a Bank of America or even the spy in general. OK, so oftentimes you got to sit through some shit. You got to sit through some pain. You got to sit through some nonsense to figure out when the timing actually supports your move. And you can see here, plain and simple, is that the only time this Netflix or that idea paid out, AKA you guys wanting to buy Netflix, the only time that idea really panned out was when the SPY was in support of that thesis, okay? So 90% of my trades, guys, are all heavy based on the fact that I know or I have a good idea of what my SPY tape is doing. If I don't have a good read on my spy tape, chances are I'm either losing money or I'm not trading. OK. And what does that mean? That means you're, you're sitting around in the chop. How many of you guys have bought uh, an idea, an option in a choppy environment and you got, you know, maybe you were up a little bit, but there was no follow through and you had to book that trade for a loss. Right. All of us. Right. So most of the time, that's what's going to happen. OK, a lot of you guys are saying it sucks. Yes, absolutely. Um, you know, and, and that's what happens most of the time. That's where the mental toughness comes in. That's where the understanding that, hey, you know what? My spy tape is shit right here. I'm not going to be able to rip a trade out. So what am I going to do? Maybe I can go and write some options, you know. So on a day like today where you have spy tape just chopping up. Uh, you know, maybe it's better during that time to write some options until you start to get a move that you can get a handle on and you can start playing it for a directional trade. OK, most of the time, guys, the market sits in a pretty choppy area. If you take a look at Netflix here for the last 10 days, like, yes, you've had some selling. And yes, this thing has been weak, but it's all over the place. It's all over the place with these really, really wide, wide ranges. OK, so you can either scalp and play the wide ranges and play the fact, play some of these buy programs as much as you can. But guess what? 
if you're not fast enough to scalp and you're not fast enough to intraday trade, you're still going to get smoked here. So it's all contingent here on your strategy and then timing with the indexes. OK, so let's bring a couple examples here for some of the swing traders, right? Some of the swing traders here need environments where overnight and over the course of a couple of weeks or a couple of months, they need to understand their spy tape. So obviously we had the huge dump, uh, you know, and a really great dip buy, which ended up being a monster short squeeze. And there was some really, really hot trades that you could hang on for a while. OK, we caught a bunch of sweepers on this micron at the lows here at around 40 and 41. And then this thing went all the way back to highs. This is a great example of a solid swing trade that is backed by the action in the spy. Right. So the spy did the same thing. OK, uh, you know, we, we 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 flushed everybody out and then we went all the way back up here to 277 here and they went after uh, 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 some of the chip names, the intels of the world and all that kind of stuff. And you can still see this micron here is relatively strong in comparison to everything else, despite this drop uh, in the markets here. OK, uh, and then just. You know, just on a sidebar here, this spy tape is insane. ES here, the ranges that we're seeing in ES are really, really insane. Um, and that means that trading is going to be difficult for, uh, you know, longer time periods, especially for folks looking for swings and that are buying time. The good thing is you're going to be able to get these things for cheaper. The bad thing is, is you're in an environment where you really don't know if we could go back to all time highs. You really don't know if, um, you know, if we could go back and retest these lows, you, you really don't know. And when you're in that sort of period of, of, of nonsense or just a place that you can't understand it, the volatility brings the juice to the day traders and the scalp traders. Anybody who's holding long calls, which I know is a lot of you guys right now, there's a lot of you guys in this webinar right now that are holding long calls, which are now under the water. Um, you know, so so names like this Bank of America that looked like it was going to break out the other day and then just completely failed miserably. That Goldman Sachs, which was at, I don't know, 270 or 272 the other day, had a monster pullback here, you know, and that puts a huge swamp on your swing trades uh, and your ideas in general. OK, and just as we're speaking here, you see the spy kind of topped out. And that's why now you're seeing some sort of down, a little bit of downward pressure and a little bit of stalling out here on most of the names that you're watching. And basically, I'm talking about most large cap names. That's one thing I want to throw out there, too. When we're talking trading with the spy, most of it follows suit with your large cap trades. This is the world that I live in. OK, so all the large cap names here, are Amazon, the Bank of America, you'll notice my watch list is extremely small. So this is basically my watch list right here, this and, uh, and, and this one right here. And out of these, I don't even look at most of these. I just look at most of these for sentiment. Um, you know, I want to have a, I want to make sure, uh, you know, I have names that are in most different sectors. That way I can take a look at a glance and see most names in different sectors. But this is all I trade. And half of this shit I don't even trade. I just trade the Teslas, the Netflix of the world. I trade the SPY because as long as there's that volatility uh, in the SPY tape, then everything is going to move alongside um, uh, uh, the spy as well. Okay. So we got a bunch of questions coming in. Let's leave the questions here until, uh, towards the end. I'll go ahead and take all of them, uh, or as many as I can. Uh, and let's continue here on the spy discussion. Okay. So, uh, you know, a couple examples here for trades. Let's say you guys now are scalping, uh, you know, and, 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 and trying to find a trade right now. Now you can see that this buy tape kind of topped out a little bit. We went green, we tested green. Uh, and now look at the fade here. That's even a 10 handle fade here from the highs, you know, so there's a lot of juice out here. Now, if I were to make a trade right now, just because the spy topped out is now fading a little bit. I'd come in here and I'd sell an ass ton of calls here uh, in a name like an Amazon, for example. OK, so uh, let's bring in an Amazon uh, option uh, uh, chain here and I go ahead and take a look at all of this premium here. So see, even the 1500s, Lee, look, that's still worth a dollar. You look all the way up to 1510. Like, look, you can still get 40 cents for this thing. And I actually have some open here on uh, my other platform. So let me go ahead and pull some of those options up. Uh, let's see right here. OK, so this is an option. So currently I'm already short the 1500 100 calls and now I can still get a freaking dollar for these things. So now that I know the spy tape just kind of stopped out a little bit, 
you know, my confidence here that Amazon is not going to go over 1500 by the end of the day, you know, it's it's up there. It's pretty uh, it's it's up there. You know, especially the fact that we could we just couldn't hold those highs and now we faded off these 10 handles. Okay? Yes, the stock is strong. Yes, Netflix is strong and all that kind of stuff. But how far is is it really going to go another 15 points? If for this Amazon to go another 15 points, SPY has to go back to highs and then some. Could it happen? Sure. What is it likely here? Probably not. So I'll come in here and start writing some calls here and start seeing if I can get some good prices on some options here. All right. So let's see if I can get it. So I got a buck 40. I got a dollar 30. And let's just throw one out here at 145 and then see if I can go ahead and scrape that premium. OK, so I like writing on Fridays simply because it's it's a lot easier for me. Um, you know, sometimes the directionals, too. I'm a little bit off the spy tape this morning here just got me kind of, you know, weirded out here. So I was like, all right, let me just go ahead and write some stuff uh, and try to and, and try to book some premium. Uh, now, this is pretty close. Obviously, this is pretty close. The safer way to go. Uh, is to go to maybe a fifteen twenty. You can get free money here to me. You know, you can get a dime here, uh, and even the fifteen fifteen, you probably get twenty cents or thirty cents on this option, uh, and then so on and so forth here. So it's much easier to bet on a Friday of where a stock's not going to go uh, than where it is going to go, especially if you don't have a, a spy tape that's really convincing at all. Um, okay, so again. Uh, you know, as far as scalps are concerned, you want to play to the momentum. OK, you want to play to the momentum. Obviously, here with this, uh, you know, they, they kind of punked everybody here. This was that first buy move. They traced everyone back, got everyone out of that move. And then this was the buy program that just kind of set everything off. So once you saw like right here, 266.80, 266.75 really go through, you know, that's your long trade. OK, and now we're kind of seeing the same thing up here. Right. We're seeing a fade, uh, a necessary fade from the highs. And then we're kind of seeing folks come kind of come back on this stuff. You know, so maybe you start buying the dip again on the spy or maybe you start looking at your names here that you still feel bullish about that can still go higher, whatever it might be, a Bank of America, Netflix or whatever it is. And then trade it on the high on on the upside. Now, the key is, though, is to make sure the spy is currently moving. Uh, or at least has that kind of sentiment towards the side that you are trading. If not, and if we start going into chop mode, uh, you know, and you can kind of already see that we are, once that easy money is done, then things get a little bit difficult. Okay. Same thing off the open. We had a nice sell off the open. Amazon sold pretty aggressively. And then easy money was done. We went into this sort of chop period. Same thing kind of happens over and over and over again. And you start to get used to when to put the size on, when to really believe, you know, spy tape is going to move uh, and when you can take an aggressive position uh, out there in whatever name that you are trading. OK, now on the flip side, there are always going to be names that don't trade with the spy. OK, and these are the one off trades and these are the sort of diamond in the rough things I like to call them. When you can get a, a move out of something and it doesn't matter what the market is doing. So if you take a look at the Snapchat here, even while the, the, the market was dead and just kind of weak, the Snapchat showed a lot of relative strength. These are names to notice because they've kind of broken away from the spy. And when you notice names like this, you can find some really solid trades. Uh, you know, that kind of move out of nowhere here. Now, Snap has already been super weak. Nobody has wanted this thing. It's been in and out of the news. And today is just a buy day. Today is just a buy. Somebody is out there buying aggressively. Maybe there's some short squeezing. Who knows? But they want this stock and they want this stock higher. OK, and regardless of what the market is doing, this Snapchat is kind of doing its own thing. So it's important to notice uh, and be able to notice which names here are sort of pulling away from being correlated so much with the spy. We saw the same thing with X, too. Uh, I know a lot of you guys have been trading that X as well. This X has been so bullish regardless of what the market has been doing relative strength completely. And it's important to notice these trends. That way you can come back to these names because you know there's some relative strength or weakness here and it doesn't matter what the hell the spy tape is doing. OK, now if we pull back to that, to that Amazon trade that we were going for, you can see here now we're getting the chop fest up here. 
Okay. And if you go back to those calls here, I think I was, what, what, what was I writing? I was writing the 1500s here. Uh, most likely here, you can see nobody is really trying to aggressively buy these things. By the way, guys, you can start, you're going to get this good at options uh, tape reading uh, and spy tape reading and everything where you can tell where a stock is just by looking at the option price. Okay. And again, this is stuff that I do uh, uh, very aggressively um, uh, during the master course. Uh, and again, those of you guys that are looking for the master course, uh, go ahead and check out uh, sangluchi.com forward slash MC. Uh, uh, my guy Charlie here is going to send you the link as well. We start uh, in about a, a week, a week and a half, I believe. Um, and what you're going to get in here is all tape reading, uh, how to use the flow, obviously, to support your thesis, find you ideas to trade. Uh, you're going to get my whole writing strategy as well. And then more than anything, it's just options, options, options. Why is, well, you know, why is an option price the way it is? Um, you know, what kind of what kind of things do you need to take into consideration before you make this trade? Remember, you have to be able to buy an option for a dollar, let's say, and sell it for two. What's going to make it go to two dollars? OK, what are the factors here that are going to stop it from going to two dollars? Are you asking the question? Are you asking the right questions? Can I get this option for cheaper? You know, does it even matter that I'm paying this much money for it? Why is it expensive? Why is it cheap right now? All those questions here you need to be able to answer very, very, very quickly um, in order to make the right decision at the right time. OK, so you're going to get 12 live classes, then you get live trading sessions. So you guys are going to watch me trade live uh, in the morning uh, and then you'll also get uh, uh, the static content that we also have as well. Uh, and all that is going to be accessed uh, inside the chat room, too, as well. So uh, you guys are going to have access to the chat room and then you guys are going to be able to access your webinars uh, and all the course material. Uh, right here uh, in the chat room as well. Okay, so let's go ahead and take some questions here. Uh, I know we got a lot of questions here. We got uh, questions here from Suja when you're saying uh, call right. Are you selling calls out of the money? Uh, yes, this is currently out of the money. I mean, this Amazon call right here is out of the money. It is currently a 1500 strike. So we know it's 15 points out of the money. So yes, I am selling these things out of the money. Uh, and I'm writing these calls, assuming they're going to inevitably end up at zero or somewhere around zero or something like that. OK, so that's uh, that's what I'm doing there. Uh, let's see. Jason is saying, why do you prefer reading spy tape over ES? I mean, again, you have to make it manageable uh, for you during the day. So for me, like it's easy to have a spy tape up if I go to ES. You know, ES is a whole different world. ES moves a lot differently. There's a lot. There's, a, there's so many different players involved in ES. Um, you know, the liquidity is different. The, the, the style of it is different. The movement is different. All of that is different. Now, ES obviously has a huge impact and it is the whole impact on the spy. So it's very helpful to know and see if there's huge sellers on the ES or huge buyers on the ES. So if you can read ES tape, um, you know. That's more power to you. Now, for those people who trade SPY and ES aggressively, you guys know for a fact, if you've been trading for a while, you got to have just a good feel for it. You got to have a good feel for momentum and good feel for how it looks over the tape. OK, because there's so much transactions going on on SPY tape at any given time. That's it's too much to watch. It's too much to try to comprehend. OK, and I'll just pull over a level two here just so you guys can can see in detail and you might not even get the data here that comes up. That's why it gets so aggressive. Sometimes I won't even get it to pull up. Um, but if you're looking at spy tape here, there's so much activity. I mean, there's ticks every single second. It's very difficult to make sense of what is happening on every single trade, which is not really what you want to do in the first place. You just want to get a good idea of flow, how things are moving, any any really large buyer or large sellers or any real large volume that kind of comes in as well. Uh, OK, so as far as tape readers go, tape reading is very valuable when you combine it with also, uh, you know, sentiment reads, options pricing uh, and really what the indexes are doing, what kind of, you know, what kind of market you're in at the time. And this is all stuff that you have to build over time. And I will show you guys how to do it. All right. Uh, what are the questions here? Do we have Suja is saying, uh, is it one week out or is it weekly? Uh, the, the Amazons that I'm writing today, these are these are all for this week. 
Okay, so sometimes sometimes I'll go out a week in advance. And again, my whole writing strategy, I just give you guys in the course too. So if you guys are interested on writing spreads and, and writing for time decay or writing for directional moves as well, uh, you know, we can do that too. Uh, okay, what else do we got here? Uh, Jorge is saying, which broker do you use to input your options order? I use Sterling over here, but I, dude, I got, I, bro, I got, I got, I got, I got five platforms, man. But then not even counting crypto. Like I got, I got six crypto exchanges too, man. I got all kinds of shit here. Steven is saying, uh, uh, do you have any favorite ETF? Uh, hold on one second. I had a lot of questions here coming in. Steven is saying, do you have any favorite ETFs to scalp Friday premium? Uh, what are your favorite stocks to sell on Friday expiration at the moment? I mean, dude, uh, you always got to go with the big boys, you know, because you can get so much you can get so much premium out here. I mean, you saw that Amazon chain. I mean, you can go out 20 points in the last, what, three hours of the day and you can still get 50 cents. You know, you can still get 50 cents out here. Now, granted, you cannot do this. Unless you got some capital, you do need some capital and you do need some leverage. Now you can do it small and then slowly, slowly grow until you get, you know, you, until you get a PMA account, until you keep moving. Uh, but this is a much more consistent way of making money in options over time, because as you guys all know, anybody who trades options, you have to be able to time shit. And if your timing is whack, then guess what? Your trading is going to be whack. Your P&L is going to be whack. And your mindset is going to be whack as well. So timing is is everything in options. And you can't have proper timing unless you can read the tape, unless you can, you, you know, you have a good read here on the SPY uh, and what it's doing. Uh, and then understanding why an option is priced the way it is, when you should kind of come in, low volatility versus high volatility, all that kind of stuff is very, very, very important. Um, uh, to trading here. All right. Uh, what else we got? So Stephen here, uh, let's say, uh, or buy further out of the money hedge to lower margin requirements. Absolutely. Absolutely. So you're going to, you're going to be trading spreads as well. Guys, by the way, take a look at this buy. Okay. So we got another leg up right here and we're testing those highs. Chances are we could here stretch again and go to, let's say 268 and a half or so. In that case, this Amazon is probably going higher and it's much smarter now to even come here and sell some puts, right? So now you want to come in here and sell these puts because you still know Amazon is very aggressive. You know, how much can we get for four? Look at these 1470s here, 1460s. I can still get 60 cents for this. And that's 30 points out of the money here, you know? So I'll probably move up on these puts and take this premium as well. OK, so more ideas here as the the stock continues to move and as spy continues to show us what is happening. OK, do you prefer spy weeklies to longer term? Um, Dude, it depends. It all depends. You guys are asking me, should I buy longer term, this, that, whatever? It all depends. What kind of fucking market are you in? If you're in a dry, low volume, smelt up market. You can't weekly suck weekly. Suck. You ain't going to make no money on the weeklies. So you have to buy. You have to buy far out in time and you got to sit in these things. If you got ranges where there's 40 handles and spies going up and down four points a fucking day, screw the longer term shit. I'll play some weeklies because I know I'm going to get some juice. OK. And again, you being able to flip to different time frames, to different strategies, you understanding what strategy you want to begin with and not going way outside your wheelhouse here, trying, trying so many different things that don't suit your personality. That's another thing that we talk about. OK, so now you're talking psychology, which is more or less everything. So I can teach you all this stuff in the world, but you're still going to suck at trading if you don't have a, a, a grasp on your mental state as well. And we talk about that. We delve into that as well. I show you my, uh, you know, my sort of history as a trader, my ups and downs. And there has been a lot, of course. OK, uh, any other questions? Any other questions at all here? Uh, I know there's still a lot coming in. Uh, again, the master course here starts uh, in about a week. Uh, I think next, uh, I think it's like March 12th, something like that. Um, and uh, hopefully we see you guys in there. We already have a lot of folks uh, in here as well. I think we're limiting this too. And by the way, I don't teach this all the time, nor do I like to because, you know, it's a lot of work here for me. So I usually just do one a quarter or something like that. Sometimes I'll push it off too. Um, so, you, so if you guys want to make the next leg up here in your trading, I would definitely look at doing it, uh, uh, right now here. Okay. Uh, let's see, are we doing, 
Uh, I'm getting questions here on discounts. Uh, I got to hook up. Uh, let's see. I'm going to have Charlie here help you guys, but I think I need to find him. Hold on one second here, Charlie. Uh, let's see. Make organizer. Okay. Uh, Nimesh is saying, how much is the master class and how many students in one class? Uh, Charlie, you want to go ahead and mute yourself there? Um, uh, let's see. I, actually, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let Charlie hit you up on that one. So Nimesh, Charlie here, hit up Nimesh. Uh, and he'll give you the, all the all the details. Uh, Bay Wafa is saying, where do we ask questions? I mean, bro, you're asking the fucking question right here. Do I have to smack you? How many times should I smack you? Uh, Nate here is saying, what about past guys who have taken older similar classes? Um, we actually hooked them up. I know we hooked them up. So Charlie's going to get at you right now. So, you know, I, I don't I don't see why you should be able to uh, to take it again or take it as many times as you want to. Um, remember here, take a look at Spy. Take a look at Spy. I don't think Spy is done here going up. So now we had the buy program get us back up. Now we're holding the highs. There's still people trying to squeeze names here. Remember that you still got a three hours and a half left here in this market. We could easily, easily come back a lot more here. And just by looking at that Netflix, I mean, look at this thing. This thing is up two and a half points right now on the, on the, on this thing, you know? So to me, like, yes, the spy absolutely got crushed. And we're looking at 268. But has anything changed? Has anything changed? Has the market changed and everything? You just got a bigger washout. And that's what's happening here. The longs aren't as easy as to hold through as they were from before. And you can see that just by the volatility. But the volatility is also good because it brings us a lot of trades. It brings us day traders a lot of opportunity uh, that we can really take advantage of. Um, okay, so we got one more question here that I'm going to take. Ephraim is saying, "Is today's lessons recorded, bro? It's it's always recorded, man. We'd be we'd be herbs of 2018 if we didn't record it and put the shit up somewhere. All right, uh, Baywafa, I heard your question, and now that you asked me to read your question, I might not even answer your punk ass question. How about that, uh, Charlie? Here, you want to hook up uh, a couple other people here? I'll, I'll I'll go ahead and hook you up. I'm new to options and loving it. Coming from a small cap two year background, my question is for options. Do you look at the tape for the underlying or the tape on the actual contract? I am learning the premiums disappear so quick and also return so quick. Well, I mean, you're learning a lot of what you need to learn, and you've already seen examples of your question here discussed uh, today. Um, so you want to be able to look at both. You know what I'm saying? You want to be able to look at both, but you're not. So what I do is is I, I'll, I'll look at both at the same time. So let's say I got this Amazon 1460 put up, okay, and then I got you know this this uh, this other thing going on here. So the, the, so then I got uh, the the uh, the stock thing going up here as well, okay. So what I want to do is let's just pull this one up, right? So you got a 1460 put. You want to watch how this option trades alongside this stock. We know right now the spy is strong. We know right now the sentiment on Amazon is strong. So what does that mean? That means we want to come out here to some of these calls and see how they're trading, right? We want to see how these things are trading. Do they react aggressively along with moves here? Are they slowing down? Are we losing premium? How much time do we have left till decay or, or till, till, the, uh, till the option expires? What kind of move do I need to see on the stock to justify me paying $1.50? Most of you guys don't ask this question. So if you look at this option and say, okay, fuck it, I'm gonna I'm gonna pay a dollar forty-five for this. Guess what? The, the the strike here is fifteen hundred. That means they're already pricing this this thing to go through fifteen hundred. If the spy doesn't go up anymore, do you really think you're gonna get fifteen hundred on this? That's ten points out. You got three hours left till expiration. Why the fuck would you pay a buck forty-five for this when you could probably get it for ninety cents? You could probably get it for seventy cents. You could probably get it for sixty cents. And you got no guarantee the shit is going to happen, and you got no time. Why put yourself in that situation? However, I know the answer to that question is because you're a fucking junkie, and you're going to do it anyway. And that's what makes a market, ladies and gentlemen. That is what makes a market. That means a market maker can come out and sell all you chumps this option here at a buck thirty at wherever the fuck it is because he already sees the flow, and he's gonna he's gonna make he's gonna take all this money to the bank. And you guys are going to pay for an option that is going to go nowhere. It's going to go nowhere. All right. And that's where most of you guys are. This is why you need me. And this is why, you know, I'll probably see you during the master course here. All right. 
Any other questions? Any other questions at all? Uh, my admin here is, uh, uh, is, is here to hook up any questions that you guys have on the master course too. Um, so if you guys want to know further details on, uh, you know, content, how do you access it, payments and all that kind of stuff, go ahead and, uh, and let us know if you need any information, we will go ahead and give that to you. Um, Amath here is saying, I saw you on Tim Sykes DVD. God, that must have been so long ago, man. That, that, I, don't, I don't even remember doing that shit. Um, but that was, you know, that was when I started out, you know. Mitchell is saying, I don't want to be a junkie. I mean, bro, nobody wants to be a junkie, but this is the nature of what we do. Remember, you're, we're talking about options here. We're talking about options. Most people, you, you guys want to get into the market. You want, you want to trade stocks. You want to trade this. You want to trade that. Once you get into the world of options, that's essentially what this shit is. These are bets. These are all just bets. And most of the premium that you're looking at, it's just thin air. It's thin air. It doesn't, it's not worth anything. And if you look at it any differently, you're a fucking chump. You are a chump and your trading career here is going to come to a very quick, quick demise uh, if you don't know what you're doing and you can't time these things properly. Look at this option. We're watching this thing right now, okay? Now, the stock isn't going anywhere, but you tell me. Why is this option here, you know, just going down in premium and there's no bids? Look at the liquidity here on the bid side, right? There's nobody here that wants to buy this option and there's nobody here aggressively doing it. Can you guys tell me after all the stuff that we've been talking about, why is this option doing what it's doing? All right. And if you can't answer that question, you're you're going to get smoked out here. Bay Wafa is saying uh, on Netflix, I saw the premium didn't disappear on the call side uh, at day of expiration. Uh, does it happen sometime? Of course, man. Of course, Anything happens, man. Anything. OK, but if you don't understand how these things work, why they're priced the way they, they are, why they move the way they are. And if you're justified in paying the price that you, you know, that you're giving at the moment and then spreads talking about stuff with wide spreads, um, you know, there's a lot of things that goes on. Uh, uh, with, with, with this kind of stuff, okay, that you need to make sure that you are aware of before you get heavy into the game, okay? Um, any other questions? Claude here is saying, I saw you last night on Wall Street Code documentary, Buying at the Close. Can we learn how not to make <laughs> – yo, that was funny. That was funny, man. That was with the New York days, man. Dude, I was – and then you saw what – you saw the size that I was throwing out there, you know? So back in New York, like I had a much bigger book and I was I was throwing around 400 lots, 500 lots, 1000 lots of Facebook. You know, if I had a regular position, I would have spy a thousand contracts. You know what I'm saying? I'd have a thousand contracts. I'd have 2000 contracts for 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 spy. So every tick here, you're making a losing two thousand dollars, you know, and imagine a, a, a high volatility market like this. You know what I'm saying? You're, you're making and losing two hundred thousand in, in in point clips. You know what I'm saying? So there's a lot of money out here. There's as much money as you guys want to go after. It's all out here. That's not a question. That is that is never the question. The question is, are you capable enough uh, and um, are you mentally strong enough to be able to put it in your pocket? And can you even keep it? You know, but now we're talking about other stuff. And again, this is all stuff I, uh, I address in the uh, in the master course as well. All right, guys. Uh, do I still read the tape? Dude, of course. This is all I do, bro. Do, 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 you know, these charts are just for you because I know you guys love charts. Charts are bullshit. This is bullshit. This is real. All this here is real. This is the only th this is the only thing you need to work off of. This is the only thing that even matters. All right. All your charts are based off of shit here. So if you can't read this shit and you just want to look at chart patterns, fine. Yeah, go ahead. See how that goes. You know, and you want to look at your technical analysis and shit. Yeah, good. Tell me how that goes. Great. Go do it. Um, Philip here is saying, do I talk about psychology as well? Do, do y'all, what the fuck, you know, I'm not even going to answer that question. I should smack you. Mitchell is saying, how did, how did, uh, uh, how did you eventually end up trading options, not futures or another asset class? You really want to know the answer to that question? Shit, man. The answer to that question. And, and it's going to sound crazy, but it is what it is. You are who you are. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm, I've always been like the sort of cowboy trader type. So when I first found out about options, like I traded, I traded like a 10 lot on a name like a fucking cheesecake, cheesecake factory for earnings or something. And and um, and I'm and I doubled my money and it was just a 10 lot. Right. So it was just like a grand that I put in the shit. And then I was like, holy shit, how do I put a million dollars in an option and double the option? You know what I mean? So that's all I was thinking. <laughs> and from that point on. It just it just it just kind of grew. And again, 
it's not that simple. Of course, it's not that simple. You know, you can't even put it. If I put a million dollars on an Amazon option, these market makers know they, you know, they see me coming a mile away and they got more money and more time than me. So they're going to they're most likely they're going to shake me out of my position. I'm going to lose my freaking ass. And then whatever I wanted to happen is going to end up happening. Like you are battling against people that are smarter, against computers that that understand your behavior, that understand your flow, that take into account so many things at one given time that you can. Um, you know what I'm saying? This is yo. What are, you, what are you thinking out here? You know, uh, cues versus spy. Use them both, bro. Uh, Ariel is saying, Lucci, is it possible to trade a thousand account, thousand dollar account in this market, bro? Of course, man. Of course. A thousand dollar account is great, man. You you got to start somewhere. You know what I mean? You got to start somewhere. But listen, if you got a thousand dollars, you know you you got to be smarter. You got to be more selective. You know, Lee here is saying I lost seventeen grand in six months. I'm still eating pizza for dinner. Uh, no doubt. You know, I I hope things turn around for you. Depending on if you know seventeen G's is is a lot for you. Nimesh is saying I know how to buy calls and sell calls and puts. Do I even qualify to attend classes? I don't know anything, bro. You're the best one. OK, you're, you're the best one for this class. People that come in here and think they know shit. Those are the worst ones. Those are the worst ones. People that come in here with already a bias to, let's say, technical analysis or all this bullshit. Those are the worst ones. Those are the worst ones because you're already biased. You already think you, you, you know what you're doing out here. But your P&L says otherwise. That's why you're talking to me in the first fucking place. You know, so I'm out here saying I'm new to options. I saw saying Lucio on Tim Sykes DVD and then I followed him on Twitter. Uh, but I'm interested in options. Thank you for your background story here. You know, next time, try to cut that shit short. You know what I mean? Um, yeah, so Nimesh here, you you totally qualify for, for the classes, bro. Um, you know, folks here who don't know anything, those are better. You know, that way you're not you're not already predisposed to, uh, um, you know, to a way that the market works. Um, you know, the market is changing all the time. All right. It is changing all the time and you have to be able to adapt. You have to be able to understand how to move, how to change your strategy a little bit or how to sit back and do nothing. You know, a lot of people just need to do that. Um, I have so many people in my chat room right now that don't do well on on days like today, you know, on days like yesterday, because we're too fast. We're moving around too fast and they can't think that fast. And that's fine. Accept it and move the fuck on. I don't do well in markets that are slowly trending up. I hate that shit. I can't stand that shit. You know, so for this whole time, I'm just I'm just putting around until shit like this happens, you know, and then when stuff like this happens, I come alive, baby. That's what happens. All right. Uh, Mitchell here is saying, are the are the market makers just raking in premium now on the steel companies? Bro, market makers rake in premium every day and they rake it in in huge, huge ways every single day. It doesn't matter what the hell you're looking at. However, if you're looking at the steel companies, yes, once you go into consolidation, this is the prime time here for market makers, because guess what? Chumps like us are doing what? We're trying to buy breakouts and we're trying to buy breakdowns. And guess what? At no point does the stock actually break down or break the fuck out. Therefore, you can sell a high high volume uh, uh, option up here for a nice fat premium and you can destroy everyone. And you can sell a nice high price put right here and you can destroy that as well. So, uh, you know, during the choppy periods on, on a lot of stocks, that's where market makers really make most of their money. Uh, Angel is saying, have you ever thought of making your own automation system? Bro, I've, I've made several. I've traded several, you know, and even that is not a guarantee either. There's so many people. There's so many great coders out there. There's so many great uh, uh, programs out there that still have to constantly adapt. They still have to change their code. You're only as good as your fucking code. All right. And then now when you're fighting against a code that's 10 times better than yours or that's back with more money or whatever, you think it's that easy to just automate some shit and roll with it? Oh, my God, man. Oh, oh man. I, you know what? I'll tell you right now. I invested even uh, uh, several hundred thousand dollars in automated programs. And they worked for maybe a year. They worked for a couple of years. But that code didn't, you know, or that edge or whatever they were going after didn't continue working. And they didn't flip. And I lost my ass. You know what I'm saying? So and these are people who have degrees, bro. These are people who have degrees in markets, degrees in, 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 in computer engineering and all this shit. All right. You think that shit matters, man? <laughs> Yo, I should smack all of you right like right now. You know, I wish there was a smack button. Uh, anyways. All right. Uh, let's call it here. 
And uh, any anybody who needs more information here on the course, remember, we are starting uh, in a week, week and a half. Go ahead and email us, uh, uh, charlie at sanglucci.com. You can email us, contact at sanglucci.com. We got all of it here. Or you can hit us up on Twitter, DM, uh, and all that kind of stuff. Thanks, everybody, for joining. Watch the spy. Watch the spy today here. At, honestly, here, look at this. We're right back to highs. And it looks like we might stretch again here. If you take a look at most names here, it looks like we're still uh, uh, moving here on the upside. Uh, all right. Uh, as for folks in Canada here, uh, yeah, just go to YouTube, man. Go to YouTube. Everything's on YouTube. Later.